Hi and welcome to the Imprendo Guitars Workshop. My name is Daniel and in this building update video I'm going to show you the progress I made on these two necks. So first we're going to take a look at some footage I shot during this week while I was working uh, on these necks and during the video I'm going to give you some quick tips, tricks and I'll also answer some questions. And when we come back to the workshop in well, real time, uh, I just received this package. I ordered a couple of guitar parts to go on these guitars and yeah, I thought it would be nice to do an unboxing together with you. So a question I recently got was about wearing ear defenders. I said, hey Daniel, why aren't you wearing any ear defenders or headphones or whatever when you're working on machines? But the fact is I do wear ear defenders, but they probably don't show up on camera because I'm using these very tiny custom-made silicon ear defenders, specially made to block any machine noise. Uh, so yeah, and I think because they go all the way into my ears, they won't show up on camera as much. Like so, maybe you can see them. But yeah, I do wear ear defenders when I'm working for long periods of time with machines. And of course, like anyone else, in the heat of the moment, I sometimes forget them. But usually when working on machines, I do wear ear defenders. So. So I hope you're now all at ease and I'm, yeah, I'm very appreciative of you caring about my health and about my hearing, uh, but I can assure you <laughs> it's well taken care of most of the time. So thank you and I really appreciate your concerns, but yeah, let's go back to the video. I think I've mentioned this before, but a big part of making anything, but especially making guitars, is fixing mistakes or fixing little accidents. And I have to confess to you guys, I had a little accident or a little mistake from my part. I was sanding the back of the headstocks on my spindle sander setup, and I did one and it all went perfectly well. I've got a nice back of the headstock, nice curve into the volute, and a perfect thickness uh, headstock and then I went to do the other one and this is maybe a downside of doing two builds uh, at the same time. I just took this neck and without even thinking to adjust the fence I put it in the spindle sander not realizing that the template uh, on this neck to keep the uh, center line nice and parallel with the spindle sander 
was of a thicker material. So I just put it in and as soon as I put it in, I realized I forgot to adjust the fence. So this headstock ended up a couple of millimeters too thin. I'm always aiming for about 13 and this is just over 10. So it's two and a half to three millimeters too thin. To fix this, I'm going to use the following. I'm going to use a slightly thicker headstock veneer. So then I can gain a millimeter back. And I'm going to use this nice piece of ebony veneer and I'm going to laminate it in between. So I've got a design feature. So turn your mistakes or your accidents into design features. And the nice thing about this is that the ebony striping, so the maple ebony and black limba uh, laminate returns uh, or is also seen now on the headstock. So I hope this looks nice. It fixes my mistake or the accident and it gives me a nice design feature in return. So if you end up by accident with a headstock that is too thin, just apply a veneer. After rounding over the majority of the neck and making sure my shape is all nice and the way I want it, I'm going to work on the volute and I've drawn in the shape I want my volute to be on the back and I'm going to blend this in with the rest of the neck and for the most part removing a lot of this material using a variety of small rasps and files and sandpaper or whatever else I can get my hands on.
So the way I check my necks is by touching it and by feeling it and if it feels right it most likely is right. So unless you're making copies or next to exact specifications you really don't need to have templates or gauges to measure the neck. If it feels good to you or to your client it most likely is a good neck. After radius sanding the fretboard, I'm going to do my inlay and I wanted to talk real quick uh, about the reason why I prefer to do my inlay after sanding the radius in the fretboard instead of doing the inlay while the uh, fretboard is still nice and flat. First of all, I'm always scared, I used to be scared when doing the inlay before radius sanding that I would sand through the inlay while radius sanding my fretboard and especially when you have very thin inlay material chances are uh, when you radius your fretboard that you will sand through your nicely finished inlay and you have to start over again so that's the first reason the second reason for me personally is I use aluminum for my inlays most of the times and aluminum sends away at a different rate as the wood of the fretboard so there might be a possibility, especially with a bit larger inlays, that while radius sending I accidentally create a hump um, where the inlay is. So I create a bit of a bow in my neck because the inlay won't sand away as quick as the rest of the fretboard. So that's my second reason. And of course doing it this way makes it uh, less easy to do because I have to take uh, the curvature of the fretboard into account uh, when using my Dremel uh, to do the actual uh, engraving for the inlay. So, but yeah, that's the reason why I prefer to first radius my fretboard and then do the actual inlay. So it's to prevent sanding through the inlay and to prevent making an accidental bump in the fretboard uh, while radius sanding if there's already an aluminum inlay.
after finishing the inlays on the 12 fret, I'm going to put in some fret position markers. And I think I mentioned this in a previous video, but I like to make my own fret position markers out of a piece of aluminum rod. And I've got two sizes, a 4mm one and a 5mm diameter uh, aluminum rod. And now I have to decide which size to use for my fret markers on these guitars. Personally, I like a very small fret position marker, so I think I'm going to use the 4mm uh, rod. And I've got a nice little jig that fixes to my workbench using two little dowels and they go into these uh, bench dock holes. So it's nice and secure and this allows me to cut a lot of very small slices from this rod. I'm only going to use slices of about two to three millimeters and yeah, put them in to the fretboard. These two necks are coming along nicely and after having done the um, fret positioning markers I took out my leveling beams and, set and made sure that the two fretboards are now absolutely dead straight. Uh, I have only a single pass to do and that's with 320 grit sandpaper stuck to my long leveling beam and give them a final sanding before starting to polish the fretboard with these high grit sandpaper starting at 400 and ending somewhere around 2000 I guess. Uh, so the fretboards will be nice and polished before putting in the frets. <laughs> So I hope this shows up on camera, but it's a nicely polished fretboard and this is without any oil or finishing products, just sandpaper and a piece of paper towel. And yeah, this fretboard is ready to take some frets. So I hope you enjoyed watching me work on these two necks and you got some useful information uh, from the video. If you have any questions, like always, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll try my best to answer them as soon as possible. Now let's put these two necks aside and let's take a look what's inside the box. 
So yeah, let's take a look inside this box because frankly I can't remember uh, what's in it and that's because when I was ordering the parts for uh, these two guitars I had to order this, the, the parts from I think three or four different suppliers because everywhere I looked things were out of stock or had very long delivery times or even delivery time unknown uh, so I had four web shops up uh, at the same time and I needed a uh, a chrome hip shot bridge from one supplier and the black one from another because supplier one didn't have the black one but did have the chrome one and the other way around for a different supplier so I, I don't know uh, what I ordered from which supplier and I'm very curious to know if you're experiencing the same thing um, I know from my UK suppliers they have problems with customs due to the Brexit for example I ordered uh, my uh, metal um, pickup rings from a UK supplier and he notified me by email he can't uh, supply to the Netherlands at the moment due to the Brexit uh, and maybe of course the lockdown uh, has also something to do with the seemingly uh, scarcity of guitar parts at the moment so I'm very curious to know uh, yeah, how you're experiencing um, ordering guitar parts at the moment so without further ado let's open the box right let's take a look First item, I hope it shows up on camera, is a Spurzel drilling guide. So the Spurzel tuners have a little pin on the back uh, when you mount them. And this is a drilling guide. You can insert one part into the tuner hole, align the tuner the way you want it. And with the supply drill, you can exactly uh, drill the, uh, yeah, the little hole needed for the mounting pin. Very handy little tool and I'll show you uh, how it's used uh, yeah, in a later video. All right, two Graftec Tusk XL black nuts. Black Spurzel tuners, locking tuners. A set of chrome locking tuners, similar tuners, only chrome. Small parts, some battery clips, and a three way switch in black. And of course, a hip shot bridge. And this should be the chrome one. Yeah, this is the chrome one. And all the black hardware and the knobs. Uh, come from a different supplier. Most likely they will also be uh, all parts <laughs> but yeah this supplier was out of uh, um, dome knobs and didn't have a black hip shot bridge in stock so I ordered those from a different supplier and the pickups and such come from yet another supplier so yeah this box is empty but I've got the most important parts to do my measurements from are available to me now. So yeah, I can continue working on these guitars. And hopefully the other parts will arrive soon. So that's it for this week's video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, let me know by leaving a like or giving me a comment in the comment section down below. And if you're new to my channel and this is one of the first videos you're watching from me, uh, yeah. Please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell to get notified when I upload something new. Uh, yeah, next week's video will be, I think, a more in-depth video on fretting and fret work. So keep an eye out for that one and I hope to see you all there. But until then, have a nice week. <laughs>